Good afternoon, everyone. We will have opening statements by the Secretary General and the Prime Minister, and then we'll have some time for questions. Secretary General. Prime Minister Friedan, dear Luke, uh, welcome to NATO. It's uh, great to see you here, uh, and uh, congratulations on your appointment as uh, Prime Minister. Uh, Luxembourg is a highly valued uh, ally. Uh, Luxembourg uh, was a founding member of NATO almost 75 years ago. Today, you continue to make many important contributions to our shared security. You participate in NATO's multinational battle group in Romania, helping to strengthen our deterrence and defense along the alliance's eastern flank. Luxembourg is also at the forefront of NATO's technological and innovation agenda, driving our work on space surveillance and critical satellite capabilities. You participate in NATO's Innovation Fund, uh, which will help cutting-edge startups to address critical security challenges. Luxembourg is also investing in NATO's high-end capabilities, including the next generation of AWACS early warning and surveillance aircraft. This is one of NATO's biggest ever joint capability purchases. I also welcome Luxembourg's commitment to modernize your own capabilities and step up defense spending. Thank you, Prime Minister, for your commitment to, to have a concrete plan to reach 2% by the Washington summit. This is key uh, for fairer burden sharing uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. I also want to thank uh, you for Luxembourg's contributions to Ukraine including through NATO's comprehensive assistance package. You also participate in uh, an air defense coalition with 19 other NATO allies, helping to protect Ukrainian skies and save Ukrainian lives. The situation on the battlefield remains difficult, and Russia continues to launch waves of drones at Ukrainian cities and critical infrastructure. So we must step up and sustain our support. This is critical to help the Ukrainians weather the difficult winter ahead and to ensure Ukraine prevails as a sovereign independent nation. This is the right thing to do. It is also in our own security interest. At our Washington summit next year, we will continue to adapt our alliance for the future, bolstering our deterrence and defense responding to strategic competition and working even more closely with partners. So thank you again, Prime Minister, for your personal commitment to our alliance. I look forward to working with you as we prepare for the Washington Summit. So once again, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear Secretary General. Thank you for the warm welcome. And I would say my presence here today is the message. Because as I said to the Luxembourg Parliament when I started leading this new coalition two weeks ago, my first trip will be to the European Union and to NATO. I explicitly mentioned NATO because I believe not only since I became Prime Minister, but also in many of my previous functions, that NATO is the key alliance to make sure that we have freedom, democracy, individual liberty, the rule of law, actually all these key words that are enshrined in the preamble of the treaty that uh, created uh, NATO 74 years, 74 years ago. That is why I believe, especially for a small nation, that it's extremely important that we have allies who help us make sure that we remain a free and independent country together with our partners in Europe and uh, our transatlantic friends, the United States and Canada. That was true in the past, where not everybody believed that, but I always stood for that, including when years ago we bought the A400M, we Luxembourg, which at the time was not in everybody's mind that we needed to build up capacity with and for our international partners to help us ensuring our stability and our peace. And that's even more true today, where we see that the principle of sovereignty of independence of rule of law are violated in this terrible war in Ukraine after the Russian invasion of Ukraine. 
we Luxembourgers know what it means if a bigger country invades a smaller one. Actually, our parents and our grandparents know it, and we were fortunate not to know it, my generation. So therefore, we believe that we have a duty towards our friends, towards those principles we strongly believe in. And that's why I came here today to tell the Secretary General of NATO that despite our small size, despite the fact that we do not have a huge army, that we are, of course, fully committed to get to the 2% that is foreseen in former commitments of NATO allies uh, to spend enough to make sure that this collective defense, but also this collective ambition to preserve peace, stability, can be achieved. Together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of Defense, and of course you need the Minister of Finance, but we both were Minister of Finance at some time in the past, we will come up for the Washington summit next year with a plan to achieve this 2% of GNI expenditure for defense in the next decade, and we will present those plans at the Washington summit. Defense is a much broader issue than just military. The Secretary General alluded a little bit to it, and I think it's also true for NATO in itself. It has dimensions of terrorism, of cybercrime, of, um, uh, yeah, of, of many other issues where it is important that our countries are well equipped to prevent our countries from being attacked from the outside. So in all those dimensions, together with my colleagues in government, as a new prime minister, I will work hard to make sure that we remain a committed and reliable ally of NATO, as we have been in the past, but we have to adapt that to the current circumstances. On Ukraine, I fully support what the Secretary General just said, and obviously uh, uh, he knows much more on the situation on the ground than many others. For us, and for me personally, it's also again a matter of principle. Ukraine is not just a country far away from us, by the way, it's not that far away, but it is about fundamental principles. Whether we accept that one country can attack another one with the aim of destroying it or taking away its independence and its sovereignty. So the war that is fought there, also the huge expenditures and support that we are giving, also Luxembourg, 16% of our defense expenditure goes to Ukraine, is there to make sure that lessons are learned for the future, that we are on the side of those who fight for democracy, who fight for sovereignty, who fight for independence, as we fought or our predecessors fought um, in World War II and before. That is the purpose of the war in Ukraine from our perspective. And that's why the new Luxembourg government will continue to support Ukraine as long as it takes. And we will, of course, do that with our allies and partners because alone, obviously, we are too small to uh, do that. But we are part of the international community. And that's why we are happy to be part of NATO. We are fully committed to NATO. And it is with that spirit that together with my colleagues in government, especially the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, who is whom uh, I will go to, uh, to the summit next year in Washington. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have some time for questions. Uh, lady in the front row from Luxembourg Radio, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Daniel Weber for the Luxembourgish uh, Public Radio. Um, Luxembourg reached an agreement in July. Uh, it's for the Secretary General. And uh, also one question for the Prime Minister, if I may. Uh, Luxembourg reached an agreement with NATO in July um, to account the Luxembourgish defense expenditure uh, a bit differently based on national gross revenue instead of uh, GDP, uh, which makes a difference, but which still leaves uh, Luxembourg with more than a billion to spend uh, per year on defense. Um, so my question is, uh, why did NATO uh, make this exception with Luxembourg? And do you think it actually makes sense for a country with an army with less than 1,000 uh, soldiers to spend that uh, amount of money on, on defense? That would be my question for the Secretary General. Should I ask the other one right away? 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Prime Minister, um, it's still a long way to go to reach uh, the 2%. I think uh, at the moment we are at 0 0.71. Um, so, um, your government, as you just <coughs> mentioned, uh, promised um, to set up a plan and to reach uh, the 2%. Could you maybe uh, explain a little bit where the priority would be in this plan? Where do you want to spend more money? And uh, when do you think that this 2% would actually be reached? Thank you. Well, it matters what all NATO allies uh, do, big or small, uh, because we are an alliance of 31 uh, allies. Uh, we stand together. We are actually pro uh, promised to protect each other, uh, uh, to say that an attack on one will be regarded as an attack on all, uh, one for all and all for one. It's hard to imagine any kind of deeper solidarity than the commitment to uh, uh, protect and defend each other in the case of a war. And therefore it matters what each and every ally uh, does. And therefore it of course also matters what Luxembourg uh, uh, is doing as a NATO ally. And that's also why I welcome uh, the fact that uh, Luxembourg over the last years have started to increase the pen spending. Uh, yes, from low levels, but at least uh, it, goes, uh, it has moved upwards. And even more uh, why I welcome the uh, commitment uh, to uh, and, and what the Prime Minister said of, uh, of meeting the 2% uh, guideline, uh, because uh, it, it is a message that we all take our uh, uh, part of the burden, that, that, that we have fair burden sharing within the uh, alliance. Then, of course, we all understand that small countries with uh, smaller economies, uh, uh, of course, 2% of a small cake is, is, is smaller than 2% of a big cake, but that's the whole point of using percentage. Uh, because it reflects the size of, of, of the economy. Uh, so it, it, it ensures uh, a fair burden sharing. Uh, then you are right that um, before the summit in, uh, in Vilnius, uh, I agreed that we should measure uh, the defense spending in Luxembourg against uh, uh, gross national income. Um, this reflects that the, uh, the, uh, the economy in Luxembourg is uh, different or special in the way that you have a huge amount of people who actually uh, uh, work uh, and contribute to GDP in uh, Luxembourg, but they receive their, 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 their salaries and spend their income in neighboring countries because they move in and work and move out, out again. This is a special, to some extent, a technical issue. The important thing is that uh, you are ready to spend 2% of your income uh, uh, for defense, uh, and, that, uh, and that is an important uh, message and something that I welcome uh, very much. Then, of course, it makes sense uh, because uh, 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 Luxembourg is investing in important capabilities for NATO. Uh, the Prime Minister mentioned the transport aircraft, which is important for the whole alliance, to protect the, the whole alliance, including Luxembourg. Um, uh, Luxembourg is also investing in uh, the new uh, AWACS plane or the new uh, surveillance uh, 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 plane, which we now are buying together uh, uh, many NATO uh, allies. And uh, uh, Luxembourg has deployed forces uh, to Romania, to, to Lithuania. Uh, I myself, I come from a small country, Norway, and of course it's always uh, possible to say that what small countries does doesn't matter, but it matters because it's part of this collective defense, one for all and all for one. So I welcome the messages from the Prime Minister, I welcome the increased defense spending, and I welcome the capabilities that uh, Luxembourg is investing in, uh, in and also uh, the uh, capabilities you will invest in uh, in the future. Secretary General, seen from Luxembourg, Norway is a large country. <laughs> <laughs> on, on your uh, specific uh, question, um, I think the important thing is that uh, we are clear on where we want to go. Every investment that we do there will be an investment for our collective security. So we obviously need to invest some of this money in Luxembourg, some of it will be in, um, in infrastructure or instruments that will be put at the disposal of others. I have some ideas in mind, but um, I'm only in function for two weeks, as you know. So obviously, I want to discuss those uh, in detail with my colleagues in government. But the road to Washington, if I may call it like that, is clear. Um, we will not absorb all that, as I said before, in pure equipment for the Luxembourg army. But today, security 
is much more than that. As I said the, um, before, um, cyber security is one aspect. Space, and including what we already do today uh, for the uh, security, again, instruments put at the disposal of our allies are areas in which we probably can do more because we have the know-how uh, already today and we can uh, increase that. So I think it will be a mixture of things that over a time span of, I would say, five to 10 years will allow us to reach uh, that goal. And that is something that um, we will work hard in the coming weeks. And um, I can assure you that, we'll that I will have more than one meeting with the relevant ministers to achieve that in due time. But I say again, if today we are in an alliance of 31, tomorrow 32 uh, members, because I uh, hope on behalf of Luxembourg also that uh, Sweden can join uh, soon, that is very important for us. These are our friends and allies. They are the part of Europe that is today more at risk than it ever was. So if 32 countries commit to 2%, they do not that only do that for themselves, but for all of us. If today already around 20 countries go to 2%, it is our duty to pay our part of that solidarity effort. It's not a Luxembourg dream to spend more money, uh, but it's our collective obligation to show solidarity and to work for peace, stability, and therefore for our free societies in which we so strongly believe. Let me just add uh, that if the problem is that it's hard to spend 2%, I can help you. Uh, uh, because, uh, because we have a lot of uh, good purposes in NATO. So we have a big uh, uh, assistance fund for Ukraine, a comprehensive uh, uh, assistance fund, which, which actually we can, uh, if you have some surplus money, I can put it in there and, and, and provide meaningful support to Ukraine. Uh, we help uh, Iraq to fight terrorists uh, with uh, NATO uh, funds. So, so, so the problem is not to be able to spend money. The problem is that allies so far have spent too little on defense, but now allies are moving in the right direction. Thank you. We have a question from the Luxembourger Word, also in the front row. Yes, thank you, Diego Velasquez from the Luxembourger Word. A, word, a <laughs> question for the Sergeant and one for the Prime Minister, which go in this um, similar direction. Since it's not an unlikely scenario that Donald Trump or um, a Republican with similar assimilationist views might um, get into the White House soon. To the second gen, is the alliance prepared to survive such a scenario in such a critical moment for European security? And to the Prime Minister of Luxembourg, uh, wouldn't this be a good moment to think about uh, European security maybe outside of NATO or parallel to NATO at the European level? Would you be open to such discussions at the level of European leaders, for example? Thank you. If I can start, I would just say that NATO is the most successful alliance in history, uh, fundamentally for two reasons. Uh, first, because we have been able to adapt and change when the world has changed. We changed after the end of the Cold War, uh, we changed after 9-11, and we changed again after uh, the illegal annexation of uh, Crimea. Uh, so we adapt when the world is changing. The other reason why NATO is the most successful alliance in history is that we are able to unite despite our differences. Uh, there are different political leaders in NATO. Uh, there are different history, culture uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. We are uh, soon 32 different nations with different perspectives on many things. Uh, and this is not the first time we have differences. So the, the Suez crisis in 56 or when uh, NATO had to leave Paris in 67 or the Iraq war are other examples of differences within the alliance. But we have always been over, able to overcome these differences by realizing that we are safer together than alone. And uh, I'm confident that that will also be the case uh, after the uh, presidential elections uh, in the United States uh, uh, next fall, uh, regardless of who wins that, those elections, because it is then the national security interest of the United States to have a strong NATO. A strong NATO is important for Europe, but it's also important for the United States. No other major power has more than 30 friends and allies, as the United States has in, uh, in, uh, in NATO. Uh, we have been together with the United States in everything from the Korea War to Afghanistan and to, in all other missions and, and operations. So it makes the United States safer, and especially since they are concerned about the size of China 
their economy, their armed forces, uh, technology, then it is a great advantage for the United States to have European allies and Canada. Because together, if you put all NATO allies together, we have 50% of the world's GDP, 50% of the world's military might, and that's a huge advantage for the United States, and that's also why I believe that uh, 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 since it is in the U.S. security interest to preserve uh, NATO, uh, NATO uh, will remain a strong alliance uh, also with different political leaders in place on both sides of the, uh, the Atlantic. The, um, the new Luxembourg government strongly believes in the transatlantic relationship and uh, strongly believes in the added value of uh, NATO in this context of security and stability. So as much as I think that Europe needs to step up its efforts on security issues, I don't think that we should build that up independently of NATO. And by the way, I said that in my declaration to Parliament, uh, when the new government got the vote of confidence of uh, the Parliament uh, two weeks ago, we strongly believe that NATO is important for us. NATO is all its uh, 32 members, I already add uh, Sweden. I think that is extremely important for us. Our security is better ensured if we have all those people around the table with all the know-how, all the capacities, with all the um, spirit that lies within this treaty. And what the Secretary General just said about the United States is also true for a small country like Luxembourg. We have 31 friends in NATO who help us if things go wrong. And that is extremely important. And so if as much as we need to do more at a European level in terms of external security, domestic security, terrorism, that should not be independent of what we need to do with our friends in NATO. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's all we have time for. This concludes this press conference. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.